It provides great insight into the racial and gender skew of representation in higher education institutions. That's the award-winning book, Black Academic Voices, the South African Experience, authored by Grace Kuno, Hugo Canham, and Khadija Koza Shangase. Now, the book captures the personal accounts of lived experiences of black academics at South African universities. And to tell us more, we joined via Skype by one of the authors, Dr. Edith Paswana. Dr. Paswana, very good evening. A very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Good morning and good morning to the listeners. Do give us a, a brief synopsis of what Black Academic Voices, the South African experience is all about and what really inspired the book and to take us through your contribution and what that entailed. Uh, let me first correct you by saying um, the book was authored by Kuno, myself, uh, Katija, and Hugo. So I had you when you were uh, uh, naming the authors, you didn't include me. So I'm one of the editors of the book. I'm the second one. And uh, one of the things that <laughs> inspired this book, uh, partly it was to encourage young black uh, scholars who want to pursue the academic journey. And uh, part of why we thought this book was going to, to be important is because we wanted to encourage them to, to, to follow this, their dreams of becoming academics because we also wanted to conscientize them about the persisting struggles in the academy. But we also wanted them to learn, not just to hear that it's a, it's a struggle, but also to understand that uh, the academic work is a worthy endeavor and they must come fully prepared. So the book basically provides a contemporary analysis of the state of blackness in South African University using first-hand experience uh, in the form of autobiographical work. That's how we read the book. And it, autobiography was of central importance for this writing or for this project, because writing the self has never been an easy endeavor because it leaves you vulnerable and exposed. So part of what we did, we were fully aware from the onset that we are not uh, oblivious of the fact that this book is going to ruffle feathers. We were very aware that it's going to make other people feel uncomfortable in their academy. So we have gone through these emotions ourselves in its development, and, and then we invited other us also to make their own contribution. And for this reason, uh, we had a substantial amount of writers, and many we were women in histori historically white universities who, who contributed. And, and I think part of why also we wrote this book is, is, is for us to be able to engage with this, some of these uncomfortable issues that we, we tend to shy away in this country. So, because the book engages with conceptions of race, it engages with patriarchy, sexuality, gender, and nationality as colonial matrices of power to make sense of their exclusion from systems of power and knowledge in their academy. Now, Dr. Paswana, and, speaking and, of ruffling furthers and, uh, you know, touching on some of the uncomfortable issues that we face on a daily basis, you've articulated some of them. Uh, there's an ongoing debate regarding the transformation and the decolonization of higher education in South Africa. Where do you stand on this and what is at the center of this? Thank you very much for that question because... This book actually came in the wake of the struggle for Africanization and decolonization of the academy in South Africa, particularly as it regards to, to the culture of the academy, to the curriculum, and uh, to the general workings of the academy. So it was at the backdrop of the police movement that this book also came in. And this was important in framing the debate within the book. Because what we notice is that the persistent legacy of apartheid is highly reflected in, the, in our academic spaces. And when you read some of the authors, authors' childhood experiences and upbringing in the book, their educational journeys, educational journeys and so on, uh, the least you expect is 
meet them in their professional lives facing another struggle of recognition, existence, if you like, uh, and, and in what is supposed to be a free and, and, and democratic country. And, and w w with regard to the, to the debate around uh, the, the, the decolonization, I, I think we framed the book uh, based on the concept of on the concept of epistemic disobedience, which is a highly decolonial approach. And we found it particularly relevant and useful for this book because the task of decolonial thinking is to affirm the epistemic right of those who are racially developed. And in this book, we are trying to depart from, from, from conception of knowledge as from, from, from the West or the, what we call the Euro North America. All right, Dr. Paswana, we thank you so much for your time. Much appreciated. And uh, uh, your thoughts and your views you know, will go a long way in terms of shaping mindset uh, with regards to how the education sector, particularly at high institutions of learning, uh, you know, will be for South Africans moving forward. Now, uh, Dr. Edith Paswana is the co-author of Black Academic Voices, The South African Experience. Now, the book captures the personal accounts of lived experiences of black academics at South African universities. Uh,